Hey everyone, so today we're going to be doing another AP Calc BC free response question. So this one is also from the 2018 AP exam, just like the one we did last week. And But this one is question 6 of the non-calculator portion. Once again, I'll have a link below and uh, you can check that out there if you'd like. Okay, So let's dive right into it. This problem is all about Taylor series or Maclaurin series. So basically what we're told is we've given, we've given, they've given us the Maclaurin series for ln of one plus x, right? And it's this guy right here. And now we're defining this function f to be this guy here, x ln of one plus x over three. All right, so the first thing we're being asked here is to write the first four non-zero terms and the general term of the Maclaurin series of f, right? Or this, this guy right here. First thing I want you to notice is how similar this guy looks to that guy, right? So they look pretty similar, right? In fact, the only difference is that instead of plugging in x, we're plugging in x over 3, and we're multiplying the whole thing by x. So I'm going to do a little bit of fancy footworking here, and please try it, and I hope you're able to follow along, follow along, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define this function g of x to equal ln of 1 plus x, right, which we already have a Maclaurin series for. It's been given to us, okay? Now, given this, what changes do we make to f of x to reach g of x? Well, we just multiply by x and plug in x over 3, right? So given that, we can reach the conclusion that f of x is the same thing as x times g of x over 3. Sweet. And I already have a Maclaurin series for g of x, right? And so I could use this, this Maclaurin series for g of x, plugging in x over 3, multiply that by x, and I will have my Maclaurin series for f. So I hope you follow the game plan there. We want to plug in x over 3 into this Maclaurin series, and then multiply everything by x. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can now say that f of x is equal to x times, um, let's plug this stuff in. So we're going to have, we're going to start with just x over 3. Okay. And then plus, sorry, that should be minus. So it'll be minus x squared over 2, so we're going to have x squared over 3 squared, right, because remember we're plugging in x over 3, divided by 2, okay, then plus x cubed over 3, which is going to be And I hope you realize this is the same thing as x over 3 cubed, right? I'm just distributing the power uh, just to make, just to do one step extra, okay? So we have that over 3, yeah? Uh, and then minus x to the 4th over 3 to the 4th. over 4, and then plus yada yada yada, and now we will have the negative 1 to the x, so this, and now we have to deal with the nth term here, okay? So the negative 1 to the n plus 1 does not change, right? so that's still going to stay the same, but what does change is the rest of it, right? Because we no longer just have x to the n, right? But we have x to the n divided by 3 to the n. You can kind of see we have 3 to the first here, 3 to the second here, 3 to the third here, 3 to the fourth here. So we're dividing that. So we have x to the n. We're dividing that by 3 to the n. And then we have just um, times the n there, okay, which we already have there. Okay. And now we can just distribute the n to all of these, and we'll have our final answer. So our final answer is going to be We'll have x squared over 3 minus 
x to the third over t squared times 2 that's to the fourth over 3 cubed times 3 minus x to the fifth over 3 to the fourth times 4. Um, and you can now see when we're calculating this nth term, the only difference between these two now is that instead of x to the n, I'm going to have x to the n plus 1, right? Because if you notice, this is 3 to the fourth, but that's 3x to the fifth. So the x's are one power ahead of everything else. So we're going to have the negative 1 to the n plus 1 is going to stay the same. But now we're going to have um, x to the n plus 1, right? So the 3 to the n times n. And that right there would be your final answer for part A. Sweet. All right, so now let's take a look at what part B is asking for. Right? So part B is saying, determine the interval of convergence of the Maclaurin series for f, which we just uh, found down there, and show the work associated with it. Okay? So basically what it's asking for is to find the interval of convergence of this infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 plus 1, x to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n times n. Try to find the uh, radius of convergence of that guy. If you want to find the radius of convergence. Now, typically, whenever we are looking for a radius of convergence problems, we like to do either a root test or a ratio test. At least in the beginning, because those give us a very nice radius to work with, just by the nature of the test. Okay? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use a, root, a ratio test, excuse me, just because the ratio test I think will cancel some things out just a little bit nicer than a root test will. Okay, so let's go ahead and use a ratio test. Okay, we're going to use a ratio test, and basically what we're doing with the ratio test, we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of a of n plus 1 over a of n, and uh, sorry, the absolute value of, of this guy. We're taking this, this limit here, and let's go ahead and do that. So we will have the limit as n goes to infinity of a of n plus 1, which is just going to be the next term in all this. So we will have, oops, get this from my absolute value bars there, negative 1 to the n plus 2, x to the n plus 2, 3 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 times. Now, instead of dividing by a of n, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of a of, a of n because that will make things just look nicer. Also, I, have, I avoid having multiple layered fractions and also just makes the cancellations look better. So we will have all this times 3 to the n times n over negative 1 plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. Cool. So now we can go ahead and uh, do some cancellations before we evaluate our limits. So firstly, the negative 1 to the n's just disappear because we have written an absolute value. The negative 1 uh, term just doesn't show up inside an absolute value, so that's done. Um, next, this 3 to the n plus 1 and this 3 to the n cancel out. And what that leaves you with is actually just going to be a 3 to the first here. Okay? And if you're confused as to how that works, just think about it. Um, 3 to the n plus 1 is the same thing as 3 to the n times 3 to the first. right? And so basically what's happening is this 3 to the n is canceling out with this guy here. So this is the one that goes away, so you're just left with that 3 to the first there. So that's how that, that works there. Okay. In the same vein, this x to the n plus 1 is going to cancel with this to the x to the n plus 2. And we're just going to be left with an x to the first over there as well. right? So all said and done, what we're going to be left with is we're going to have the limit as n goes to infinity. The absolute value still stays. Uh, we're going to have an x times n over 3 times n plus 1. Okay? Cool. 
Now, the limit here only concerns n, right? So what we could do then is we could take this x here, right? so we see that this x and this 3 here are not really affected by that limit there, so we can bring them up to the front. So we can rewrite this as absolute value of x over 3 times the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1. So we'll keep that an absolute value. Okay. Sweet. And now we can actually evaluate this limit here. Okay. We can actually evaluate this limit. Now that's going to be an infinity over infinity limit. So you could theoretically use a Bob Tal's rule, or you could, you know, use the calc one method divide by highest power. Either way, you're going to get that this limit simply goes to one. Okay. This limit here is going to go to one. So if that goes to one, this would just come out to um, one third times the absolute value of x. So that's just because, and we can take this out of the absolute value because the absolute value of three is just three. Okay. And now we have a couple of different things that would happen. If this entire quantity, right, if this entire quantity is less than one, the series converges. If this entire quantity is greater than one, the series diverges. If this entire quantity is equal to one, then we are inconclusive, right? Because the ratio test is inconclusive when the limit comes out to one, okay? So we want this first case to be true, right? We wanna find only where this first case is really happening. So let's set this guy less than one. Right? So let's set one third absolute value of x to be less than one. And if we multiply both sides by three, we get that the absolute value of x has to be less than three. Okay? So this is the first part of where our series will converge. Okay? But there's one other thing that we need to consider. That's the first place that we need to think, but there's another thing that we need to consider, and that is what would happen if this thing is equal to one. Because theoretically it could converge there, right? It's just that the ratio test cannot tell us that, but it could converge there, right? So we need to investigate that as well. And so if we multiply both sides by three, we get that the absolute value of x is equal to three, in other words, x is going to equal plus or minus 3, right? So we need to check each of these cases, right? We need to check each of these cases in, our, in the original series to see whether or not the series is going to converge. So we're going to check these in the original series. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go up here and do that. So let's start with x equals 3. And maybe let's do that in start with x equals 3. So if we go back up to our original series, if we go back to our original series, so, so that's basically what our original series is. So we have, so we'll have the infinite sum, let's see, go to infinity of, let's see, we'll have negative 1 and plus 1 times not just x, but we're going to have 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n times n. And now, just like we did previously, uh, this 3 is going to cancel out with this guy, leaving us with just 3 to the first. So what we're going to end up with is we'll have sum from n equals 0 infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times just 3, right, no exponent on it whatsoever, over n. Okay. Cool. Now that's an alternating series, right? So this is an alternating series. Okay. So I can use an absolute, I mean, I'll need to use absolute, I can check for absolute convergence by taking the absolute value of this 
and uh, using one of my tests. Okay. So let's take the absolute value of this guy and see what happens. So if we take the absolute value of A of n, which is where which actually uses, that's going to give me this thing is just going to go away. So that's just going to be the sum from n equals zero to infinity of three over n. That diverges. I hope you see that it diverges because that's a piece. This this would be this would be a p series with p equals one, which diverges. Right. So we could say right off, right off the bat that this guy right here. Maybe let's do that blue. This diverges. by p test of p series. Right? So this diverges and so our series does not converge absolutely. However, right? However, if we look back to this original series, we can see that the limit as n approaches infinity of a of n is still equal to zero, right? Because it's why it's a constant over n, it's still going to be zero. So even though it does not converge absolutely, this guy converges conditionally by alternating alternating series test. Sweet. So therefore, we can say that, okay, x equals 3, we're good. We converge at x equals 3. So that's that. And now next, let's go ahead and check x equals minus 3. We need to check that. So coming back up to our original series up here, what we would have again is we would have some We have negative 1 to n plus 1 times, uh, we have negative 3 this time to the um, n plus 1 over 3 to the n times n. Okay. And now notice that negative 3 to the n plus 1 is just negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 3 to the n plus 1. So we can rewrite that as like that. So we would have we have negative one, and we're being a little bit extra here, but uh, you're, I hope it helps. So we have negative one n plus one times three to the n plus one all over three to the n times n. Now these negative one to the n's are both just going to go to one, right? Because they just they just go to one. Because if you combine them, if you you could put you could basically combine them into under the same exponent, you would get that they become a positive one. So that's just going to go to one. And then we can repeat the same procedure we did above, right? So this three to the n and that this one are going to cancel, leaving us with just three to the first, leaving us with just the sum as n goes to infinity of 3 over n, right? And if you recall, that's the same thing we had over here. So once again, this guy is going to diverge by the p-series, right? So this guy diverges by p-series, right? But however, this time there's no question of conditional convergence, right? Because this is our series, right? There's, we're not, this is not the absolute value of anything like we had above. So there's no question of con conditional convergence here. This is just diverges, period, right? So this guy right here is just, um, maybe let's just add it over there. So this diverges, right? So what's our final conclusion? Well, if we put all this together, uh, I know we've come quite a long way since um, we were up here, right? So. If we put all this together, what we've got is that uh, the series converges when the absolute value of x is less than 3, or in other words, it converges when uh, x is between uh, 
plus or minus 3 it converges on this interval here it also converges when x equals positive 3 right however it diverges when the absolute value of x is greater than 3 or when x equals minus 3 right so putting all this together we're going to get that our uh, interval of convergence is just going to be um, just going to be from negative 3 x 3 so this guy right here would be our interval of convergence and if we're looking for the radius that's just going to be 3 So that would be the final answer there. All right, so now we can talk about part C. Yeah. Now part C, if we look up here, um, is basically saying, all right, so let P4 of X be the fourth degree Taylor polynomial right, of F about X equals zero. We want to use the alternating series error bound to find the upper bound for this thing right here. So we're finding the error associated with this fourth degree Taylor polynomial. Because remember, the Taylor series tells us the perfect approximation of whatever um, of whatever value we're looking for. If we if we shorten that series to like an, a, a polynomial of n terms, there will be some error associated with that. We're being asked to find that error for a fourth degree Taylor polynomial. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So if we come down here, we'll realize that. Um, uh, so this guy right here is our series, right? So let's just bring that series down here. So we, once again, we have the series from n equals zero, infinity, x to the n plus one over three to the n times n, okay? So that's our series there. Now, what I want you to realize is um, we're looking for the error associated with a fourth degree polynomial. a fourth degree Taylor polynomial. This means that we have x to the fourth as our highest power. Notice here though that we have an x to the first term in this um, in this summation here, right? We have an x to the n plus one. So really this fourth degree Taylor polynomial corresponds to the third term in our series. This is going to be the third term in our series. Why is that important? Well, you'll see in just a second. So now let's talk about that error term, right? So this error term, right? So the general Lagrange error multiplier, um, Rn of x, right? This is, it has a very complicating formula, but effectively it is, it's going to come out to the n plus first term in your Taylor polynomial, right? So this is basically the error associated with a Taylor polynomial of degree, of not degree, but like of with n terms. Um, this is just going to be the n plus first term. It's going to be your, your error, okay? So now we know that we are looking at a thing with three terms, right? So therefore, we want to find the fourth term, right? So if we if we look at this for our case, our three of x is going to be the fourth term in the Taylor polynomial. I hope you follow my logic here, right? So we know that the error associated with an n with an n with a, of a with a Taylor polynomial of n terms is the n plus first term. Uh, this Taylor polynomial has three terms because it's a fourth degree and we have the n plus one, which means it has three terms. Um, and then, and so therefore we are looking for the fourth term to give us that error, okay? All right, so now that we have this, we can go ahead and actually find this fourth term, right? So R4 of, not x, but it's actually gonna be two, right? Because if you look, if you remember the original statement here, 
it was it was evaluating the Taylor formula like x equals two. So that's it's really going to be this, uh, and this is going to be equal to the fourth term. So we're going to plug in n equals four over there. So um, negative one to the four, uh, four plus one times two to the four plus one over three to the fourth times four. And when we're considering error, we're only, it's only, it's really just like a, a magnitude. So the sign really does not matter to us. So we can just take the absolute value of this. So the sign is just basically irrelevant. Um, that means that this thing just goes away. It just becomes positive one. Um, and then we can evaluate the rest of this. So two to the four plus one is two to the fifth. So we will just have two to the fifth. And then you would have that three to the fourth times four. Okay, Because remember the negative uh, and the absolute value just drops out because all of these are just positive numbers. Okay, And now we can do a little bit more simplifying. So you'll realize that this is just two squared. So that and that will cancel out to give you just two to the third, right? So what we'll be left with is um, three to the fourth over two to the third is just gonna be eight, right? So we have eight over three to the fourth. Three to the fourth is basically the same thing as three squared times three squared. So we'd have eight over three squared times three squared. Three squared if you realize is just nine. So nine times nine, we're gonna have eight over 81. And that right there would be your final answer. So yeah, I hope this helped. Um, the thing I like about these questions so much is they integrate a lot of different concepts. Um, so in this video, it's in this problem itself, we explored so many different things. So we explored, um, we explored P-series, we explored the ratio test, we explored Maclaurin series, we explored error bound, and uh, yeah. I think that's that about encapsulates it. So it's a very broad problem. Um, took a while to film this, um, but yeah, I just hope it helps. It might be kind of long, but I will put a table of contents on there so you can um, check out whichever parts interest you. But yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this was helpful. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time.